What's up everybody, John Story here with Chase's Guitar Academy and Jazz Memes and today let's discuss some of the points that make Joe DiOrio's solo guitar playing some of the best ever in jazz guitar. I was fortunate to get to study with Joe for two and a half years at the University of Southern California when he was still teaching in the studio guitar department. Uh, Joe, for those of you who aren't familiar with his playing, was one of the legendary Chicagoland, Miami, even he lived in Vegas for a minute, in Los Angeles, uh, guitarists. He recorded with people like Sonny Stitt, also Anita O'Day, um, and he's on a very famous record called um, Exodus to Jazz, uh, Eddie Harris. So there's so many great recordings of Joe. He's a very prolific guitarist. Unfortunately, he passed away a couple of years ago. But in honor of Joe, I just love getting to share with people who want to learn more about solo guitar some of the characteristics that make his playing so great. So let's discuss number one, hammer-ons and pull-offs. Now, if we take a listen to the old Hot Licks video that Joe recorded where he's playing all the things you are, he starts right off with some lines which have some hammer-ons and pull-offs. But Joe didn't think of it like hammer-on and pull-off in the way that shredder guitarists type of play. He thought it more like a saxophone. Um, Joe's biggest influences in Chicago in the 60s, 50s and 60s. Uh, were saxophonists. Uh, he was also very close friends with Wes Montgomery and he told me that Wes and him personally had lots of discussions on left hand articulation and how important it was for guitarists to play with a very fluid left hand and not to pick everything. So in terms of his hammer on and pull off technique there's a lot of times where Joe really leans into an idea and stays there as he does at the top of the All the Things You Are take here. Um, right at the beginning of his solo he starts with a nice little like turn and he stays on that turn for a while he's thinking of it like a saxophone so hammer on pull off number two Joe's intervallic designs and one of the most important ones that we hear in his guitar playing that really stands out to us is that he likes to play a lot of fourths in his playing now for us guitarists fourths can actually be really challenging because the guitar is tuned in fourths all the strings are tuned a fourth away from one another and therefore we're going to be playing notes that are in the same fret so we're having to kind of bar or get our hands sort of positioned so that we can play several notes in one area or reach out of position to reach the fourth um, say on the same string. Well Joe was always trying to find ways to do this. He was very inspired by guys like McCoy Tyner and people who played with that sort of sound. Um, he felt that the fourths in particular allowed the guitar to really open up and that a lot of guitarists tend to play in ways which they were comfortable for their fingers to play so that the the lines were very you know concise so Joe's intervallic designs and the way that he plays fourths tends to be one of the most unique things about his solo guitar playing number three okay the right hand Joe's right hand technique was amazing It was like watching a great classical guitar player play and in some of our last lessons he was in particular he was using really thick picks like the D'Andrea Proplec, at least the 1.5 millimeter pick. Uh, he also used picks that were made out of obsidian rock. One day we were in a lesson and he had a pick made of cork that he was using. Um, he felt that the pick, um, he, he was always said he was always trying to get the attack that Wes had with his thumb with the pick, which is amazing to think because Joe actually got to spend a lot of time with Wes. They were good friends. They were of that same generation. Um, and he said that the way that, that Wes's articulation sounded was just like the most warm yet punctual articulation you could hear um, and the, he said you could really imitate that with a pick but it had to be a really thick guitar pick so the D'Andrea Proplec was one that he was using and here in this All the Things You Are take that's on the Hot Licks video uh, you can see how he's using the right hand and leaning into the strings and it's interesting too you might hear that the strings sound like they're really really light on his ES-175 but Joe set the action um, actually pretty low but put heavy strings on his guitar um, he said he felt like he could get more of a um, vibrato sound with the string that way so you'll see how when he when he bends or when he gets a vibrato out of the string he'll kind of play the string back and forth like this kind of magic eight feel in the left hand <laughs>
opinion, the three most important characteristics of Joe's playing in terms of actual functional skills behind his playing are the hammer-on pull-off technique in the left hand to imitate saxophone, the intervallic designs he was using, which predominantly had fourth, stacked fourths that go way up to the top of the position of the guitar, and how his right hand just very in a very controlled way would sweep across strings in order to get more of that air sounding through his saxophone. Um, Joe was always experimenting with setup. One of, Another lesson I remember being in with him, he had brought in like a 335 that he was experimenting with and he said for a while he even had a 12 string ES335 he was experimenting with because he liked the chorus sounding effect of all the strings working with one another. He also felt that the actual guitar could do a lot of the sound production for the guitarist, which is kind of an interesting idea. It's, it seems to be like a sound concept that a lot of guys in the 60s and se later 70s had, is that the guitar itself, you didn't have to play the guitar so heavy, kind of like the way that Barney Kessel or Charlie Christian would have played in the 1940s and 50s, right? Um, for Barney in particular. Um, and that you, you would you didn't have to play so heavy into the instrument that you could play very light and that the instrument would actually resonate and give a really beautiful lyrical sound. Uh, so these are some of the takeaways I took away from our lessons back in the day, 2004, 5, 6. Miss Joe all the time, think of him all the time when I'm playing solo guitar. And be sure to check out that take of All the Things You Are, um, where he's playing his beautiful 1968 Sunburst ES-175, um, the great master of solo guitar, Joe DiOrio.